ABC News, around the world, and into your home. This is 2020 Downtown with Elizabeth Vargas, John Quinones, Cynthia McFadden, and Jay Shadler. Tonight, January 13, 2000. The schoolboy crush that wouldn't go away. Obsessed with a classmate, he grew into manhood stalking her every move. Harboring delusions that she loved him too. But to her, he was just another face in the crowd. He was the kind of boy that we would have maybe seen on the street together and said, oh yeah, what's his name? The constant craving turned to hate. And unbelievably, he revealed a plot to murder her on a web page. Would anyone stop him in time? Bill Ritter with a wake-up call for parents everywhere. Is your daughter being stalked in secret? I'll be watching you. And now, from Times Square in New York, Cynthia McFadden. Good evening. We're glad you could come downtown with us tonight. What do you remember about your first high school crush? Can you recall the aching feelings you had for someone who may not have even known you existed? I certainly can. But after that first brush with unrequited love, most of us grow up and move on. But tonight, Bill Ritter has the story of a teenager whose attraction turned to obsession, a sick and twisted obsession. For years, he stalked a young woman in secret, finding out intimate details of her life, tracking her comings and goings, following her daily routine. How did he do it? By using information anybody can easily access on the internet. When we come back, a story we call, I'll Be Watching You. this the next time you're walking down the street what if someone were watching you and you didn't know it I don't mean just making eye contact or checking you out I mean really watching following you finding out where you live where you work what time you go home what scares me about this story is that it proves gruesomely just how easy it is for a stranger to find out personal information about any one of us and like so many things these days, it can be done simply and quickly over the Internet. That's exactly what happened to 20-year-old Amy Boyer of Nashua, New Hampshire. It turns out somebody was secretly watching her. Through the Internet, he had found out where she lived and where she worked. And then he stalked her. She was pretty. She was good-looking. She was so smart. She had so much going for her. Amy Boyer was the all-American girl, attractive, great personality, a good student who took time to tutor others. After graduating Nashua High School in New Hampshire, Amy worked part-time at this orthodontist's office as an assistant. She was in her last year of dental hygiene school. She was ready to take on the world. But what Amy didn't know was that for more than four years, someone was watching her every move, stalking her and plotting to kill her. He wrote it all down in detail. I drove down the street and took pictures of all the houses, he wrote. When I saw that house and realized Amy was asleep in there, endorphins flew. I have never felt that kind of rush in my life. I'm going to kill Amy Boyer. My obsession for her will never die, but she will, she will die. And it happened here last October 15th. Friend and co-worker Heidi Holden left work the same time as Amy and another colleague. As they approached the street, Amy said goodnight to her friends and got into her parked car. But before Amy could pull away from the curb, her friends watched in horror as Amy was ambushed. They noticed a Nissan Sentra come speeding up the roadway. And pulled up right beside Amy's car and driver's side to driver's side. And they both indicate that they saw an arm come out of the window of the Nissan Sentra. All of a sudden, I just heard pop, 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 pop. And he started firing into the car. She had no idea what hit her. Amy was hit at least 11 times with bullets from a semi-automatic handgun. 
She was rushed to the emergency room, but it was too late. It didn't take police long to identify the killer, 21-year-old Liam Yowens. After shooting Amy, Yowens took his gun, put it in his mouth, and then pulled the trigger. Amy's stepfather and mother, Tim and Helen Remsburg, were devastated. You had never heard the name Liam Yowens before? Never. Never heard the name before in my life. But is it possible that she could have known him and didn't tell you? Absolutely not. It turned out Yowens was a former high school classmate of Amy's and a member of the same church youth group. Amy's best friend, Bethany Walters, says Amy probably didn't even know Liam Yowen's name. He was the kind of boy that we would have maybe seen on the street together and said, oh yeah, he was in the youth group together. What's his name? I can't remember. But why would Liam Yowens kill Amy Boyer? Sergeant Donald Campbell of the Nashua Police Department investigated the case, and it began at Yowen's house. In his room, Campbell found a computer, and stored in that computer's memory would be the answers to this murder mystery. We find a, uh, a file in there that an, is a, an internet web file, and it's entitled Amy Boyer, and uh, it was the Amy Boyer website. Run by Liam. Run by Liam. Liam Yowens had built at least four elaborate internet websites, each one dedicated to Amy Boyer. It was like a shrine. Pictures of Amy, her vital statistics, and spelled out for the whole World Wide Web to see a premeditated murder plot. How long did Liam claim to have planned Amy's death? He went back as far as the 10th grade with her, um, which would go back 95 in that area. And she had no idea? No. What starts off as, as a love attraction becomes an obsessive hate for her. He believes, through his writing, um, that Amy is aware of his affections for her and that she is purposely f taunting him with relationships with other boys, other kids in school, and is doing so to mock him. When Yowens was 15, he overheard Amy talking to someone else on the school bus. It set him off. He wrote, God, I love her. Oh, great. Now I'm really depressed. Hmm. Looks like it's suicide for me. Car accident, wrists. A few days later, I think, hey, why don't I kill her, too? Liam Yowen's intent was also red flagged in a more public venue. On the Nashua High School's alumni website, Yowen's describes his occupation as obsessed stalker murderer. It's a very hard thing to live with now, knowing that all this information was out there that it should have been brought to my attention, and it wasn't ever brought to my attention. We don't know how many people actually read Liam Yowen's writings, and we don't know why those who might have didn't do anything about it. What we do know is that Liam Yowen's was a loner. He lived with his divorced mother, and at various times, several of his five older siblings. As far as you can determine, did he have any close friends? None. Was he involved in any kind of extracurricular activities at school? None. Ate lunch by himself? By himself, standing in the corner. Every day? Every day. And that's what we know through talking to people um, that had contact with Liam. His own family members uh, indicated to us that they were not very close to Liam, that Liam was a very solitary person, and they left him to himself. So much to himself, says Sergeant Campbell, that Yowen's mother couldn't remember the last time she was in his bedroom, where Liam spent all his time. You walk into Liam's room, what did you find? What did, you, what did it look like? It was a mess. Um, it doesn't look as though it had been cleaned in, in a long period of time. And there were six rifles leaning up against the wall, almost displayed, and there was a large amount of ammunition on the floor. I just can't believe no one noticed. Not mom, not sisters, not website companies no one noticed this young man was headed for trouble and so was Amy Yowen's family members refused to talk to me but they had to talk to Sergeant Campbell he says Yowen's played violent video games Quake and Doom he also frequented internet sites like these dedicated to serial killing and mass murder 
And he also fantasized about killing other classmates, including Amy's best friend, Bethany. He wrote that I had a look on my face that made him want to kill me. Yowens also wrote about shooting another former classmate. I attempted to kill Owen on numerous occasions, he wrote on his website. I drove to the University of New Hampshire four times and once got right to his door, but chickened out. Then more recently, I went there with my Glock to shoot him. Failed again. But Yowen's main focus was Amy, and in order to kill her, he first had to find her. And to do that, he used the Internet and Internet search companies that made it quick, easy, and cheap. Less than $200 to find out all he needed to know about Amy. He's got her correct social security number, date of birth, registration numbers to her car, her address, phone number, where she works, which is all public information. Liam Yowens himself was surprised at how easy it was to find out all about Amy on the web. It's actually obscene, he wrote, what you can find out about a person on the Internet. If Liam Yowens had walked into the Nashua uh, detective agency, the detective sitting behind the desk could have looked at him and said, this guy's a nut, I don't want any part of this. Internet lawyer Brett Fawcett believes personal information is too easily available over the web. Uh, over the internet you don't have that ability to judge someone's demeanor and judge whether you think this is someone that you want to do business with. You're just opening up a, a door and allowing anyone who wants to come through it to do so. And Amy's stepfather agrees. Since her murder, he's been on a privacy crusade. Any indication in all these files that you've read that these companies, these search companies, ever asked, kid, what are you going to do with this information? I asked the owner that very same question. Of the search company? Because he said to me, sir, we are a, basically a private investigating firm. Why would we ever call the person that we're investigating and say to them, hey, got a guy looking for your social security number. You know, should we give it to him? Liam Yowen's websites were destroyed at the request of the Nashua police. But Remsburg says that was too late for Amy. And now he's pushing hard for government regulation of Internet sites. There should be some responsibility here, not into policing it, but at least to notify the proper authorities, notify the parents, notify the young lady that this person's stalking you. But Brett Fawcett, the Internet expert, says technically that's not yet possible. The idea that we have some kind of intelligent software that can call the same rational web pages from the threatening ones is really a mistake. And it's a common mistake. It's not fair. This young lady was one of the most beautiful people that I have ever met in my life. And to be fortunate enough to, to you know, to be her father was an honor. I, I just know that I, that I have to do something. It's not going to bring Amy back. Nothing is going to bring Amy back. So I can either go crawl in a hole and die or, or fight for everyone else out there. Tim Rensburg has already begun the fight. He and Amy's mother have set up a memorial fund against violence, and they're working to pass a law that would make the selling of personal information on the Internet a crime.